Thank you all, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm afraid I'm finding this technology, I'm a bit long in the tooth for it, but uh, I'm <clears throat> kind of, I suppose, having to get used to it because uh, a lot of this is now happening uh, virtually, as we know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk um, very loosely about uh, sustainability and um, the the committee that I'm in charge of uh, within ICOMOS um, uh, is in, in, in connection with uh, energy efficiency and climate change. But first of all, CARIC Conservation um, is a science-based uh, materials consultancy specializing in heritage. We established, I established it in 1993 and we have offices in, in Dublin, London and Naples, Italy. And then we have joint ventures in Australia and Canada. So we do work across regions. We're also affiliated to Trinity College here in Dublin, where we do all our own analysis uh, on materials, either through geology or environmental science or engineering. Um, and we are a multidisciplinary uh, team. So ICOMOS International, as most of you will know, <clears throat> is the International Council of Monuments and Sites. It's the technical advisory body to UNESCO on built and world heritage. Uh, I'm a past president of ICOMOS Ireland. I'm, uh, as I said, uh, president of the International Scientific Committee on Energy, Sustainability and Climate Change. And <clears throat> ICOMOS has 110 national committees. Uh, over 12,000 professional members worldwide, active in all regions of the UN. And we have two sister organizations, uh, the IUCN, which is on natural heritage, and ICROM, which is on the training side. Uh, we, we have 29 uh, international scientific committees. And I'd like to just thank my close colleagues, Mariana, Correa and uh, who is president of ISKIA and Pamela Jerome, uh, who is the most recent past president, and they've shared some images uh, and information with me. ISKIA is the, uh, our, uh, is the International Scientific Committee on Earthen Architecture, and it's a very strong committee within ICOMOS. It's a well-established one. And in June in 2021, uh, uh, hopefully, in real time, but maybe virtually, uh, we will be having a joint uh, meeting in Sweden of the International Scientific Committee of, of, of Earth and Architecture, CIAV, which is on vernacular architecture, and my committee on energy and sustainability. Um, ISCARSA is the uh, structures uh, committee and they have shown an interest in joining as well. So it will make for a, an interesting uh, mix of, of information and and perhaps um, it would be uh, good if Ebuki um, supports or comes or joins or contributes to it. Uh, we will be sending out calls for, for, for papers um, probably just before Christmas or maybe in January. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, as we all know, um, earthen architecture is spread right across the world um, and uh, there is an awful lot of it and there's an awful lot of uh, now risks through climate change, which will have uh, probably one of the most detrimental uh, mental, um, kind of impacts on earthen architecture. Um, the World Heritage uh, Earthen Architectural Program is kind of well known, and it's um, it, it's it's a good website to go to. In Ireland, um, we have a mixture, and uh, unfortunately, and pardon uh, the French, but um, a lot of it, a lot of our earthen architecture has been bastardized over the years by either putting cement renders on the outside, taking patch off and putting uh, other metal isn't the worst. Um, but, um, <clears throat> and uh, as I say, we, we, we do see an awful lot of this where there's been, and this is a good photograph showing that the window was obviously increased and brick was used to, to widen the, the open. Um, but then 
somebody decided to put a cement render on top of the lime render, and that's not a very good idea. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got uh, a lot. This this is a cottage down in, in Wexford in the southeast of Ireland uh, with a failed thatch roof, and um, the owner sadly got a uh, a builder without experience in and went in and made a hash of it to be honest with you and I'm not showing the horror pictures because I think it would shock you all but maybe that's another another day's story. Uh, of course we have failures, we have uh, problems and um, you know as Scarlett was pointing out there earlier with um, the change in climate and particularly uh, higher uh, velocity of rain, for instance. We've got also, we're tracking a lot of um, uh, higher water tables, uh, which will have an effect on the weaker foundations of, of earthen buildings. And <clears throat> this sort of scenario will happen and we will also get some collapses. Um, but if an earthen building is well maintained and well looked after and uh, the right materials used, then there's no reason why they shouldn't uh, be able to be restored and actually um, be a, a fantastic uh, iconic building like this one, um, which actually is, um, is in the Yemen. Um, and <clears throat> Eskia organize uh, many, many field trips and training programs and working and, and sharing of skills. And I, I cover that a little bit later on. Um, <clears throat> this is in Mali. And um, again, it's, it's uh, training and it, it's building a, a, an extension to an existing amazing building uh, and on the footprint of, of what was an original um, building. We all know this is basically how it's formed, although Scarlett has been telling us about maybe altering some of the, the ways and, and certainly foundations will be a cause for concern uh, in, in future. Um, and the, the whole thing about looking at energy efficiency and, and, uh, and understanding what you're doing is really paramount and you know we've got a, a, a cob building or, or an earthen building that <clears throat> is completely breathable and if you put any sort of barrier be it uh, a membrane be it a polymer that I that I heard uh, Ashley talk about earlier and <clears throat> um, or insulation that's improper that won't allow breathe that will trap moisture then we're going to get even worse failures, but even worse than that, we're not going to get the sort of energy efficiency or indeed the carbon uh, reduction that uh, the world is, is looking for at the moment. So how original is your earthen building? And that's the first thing to know. What sort of interventions have happened over uh, the decades, centuries, uh, etc. We all know these buildings have been standing um, uh, again, I think Ashley was saying 9,000 years. I mean, this is pretty phenomenal. Um, but do you understand the, the existing energy performance of your building? Our argument would be that most of these buildings will perform way above uh, what is expected. And we're certainly finding that in the more traditional building and uh, solid masonry construction buildings of, of our heritage and, and traditional buildings. And I suppose this is where we're doing most of the research at the moment. Um, and, and then to understand where is your building leaking energy. Um, and generally it's, it's through windows, doors or roofs, uh, the bulk of it. Um, so how do you assess the risks? to your building and who do I talk to? One of the biggest questions we get on an almost weekly basis is who do I talk to? Well, I don't think that's the chap to talk to if he's puzzled as well. So um, we've got to, I think, you know, look at maintain, maintaining. Um, to be honest, you don't need to do much uh, to 
existing walls. We've, we're finding on, on, on the more traditional um, stone and masonry build, and it'll be very, very similar for earthen buildings, is that um, they will perform a lot better. Um, with the EPC in the UK and BER in other countries around, um, you know, building energy ratings or, or in environmental um, performance certificates, it's it's they're mainly designed for more modern buildings, and they give a, um, a default uh, U value for uh, traditional uh, and certainly for earthen buildings. And what we're proving with the research that we're doing with Historic Environment Scotland, with the Fraunhofer Institute in, in Germany, with CADU in Wales, and even here in Ireland with the Heritage Council, etc., that when we go in and measure an, act, an actual building, it performs much, much better. And therefore you don't have to do so much. So it, it be, be careful. Um, and so, as I say, floors and windows are a potential risk, but, and again, as, as Scarlett was saying, moisture is probably the biggest risk. And with climate change, with heavier rainfalls, with flooding, um, and particularly if any earthen, built, earthen heritage is on the seaboard with sea level rise, that's something we do have to really um, take, take into consideration. And um, this is a rather fine example, again, in Wexford in the southeast of Ireland. Uh, it's called Maidlass, and it was restored, I think, in about 2005. And um, the Heritage Council did it as an exemplar. Now, 2005, we weren't that concerned over energy efficiency, so there was um, no energy. But we, we've been talking to... Um, the owner of this building and and Wexford County Council about possibly going in and doing some now measurements uh, to understand the U value of the walls and the roofs and the floor, um, and we we just haven't got got kind of anywhere with it yet, but we hope to. Um, <clears throat> but it was, as I say, an exemplar, and everything was done right. There was a, a very good conservation in, engineer, Dermot Nolan, and the architect was Pat Rohan, who is now actually a um, conservation officer for Cork City Council. Um, I was involved through ICOMOS um, to write the EN uh, European Standard for uh, energy retrofit of traditional and heritage buildings. And we don't go into specifics. So um, this, you know, kind of matrix could also work for earthen buildings. And this was published in late 2017. And um, I believe all 28 countries of Europe have signed up to it. So it is now a standard. Uh, and <clears throat> um, unfortunately, I spent three years helping to write this. and. If I want to now use it, I have to buy it for about 90, 90 pounds or something. So, but this is the matrix which gives you a kind of a process rather than a prescription uh, of activity. And I think this would be something good for people working with earth, earthen buildings to, to, to look at. So some of the research um, that we're doing at the moment with the Fraunhofer um, Institute of Building Physics. Now, this is not an earthen building. This is actually a, a, um, a, a, a stone masonry solid wall uh, building. And it, it dates from about 1720s. It's part of a huge monastery uh, in a place called Benedict Beuren uh, in Germany. And the, the Benedictines gave the monastery to the to the state because they couldn't um, kind of uh, keep upkeep it. And so the state then took over most of it and they gave this wing of, of, a pro of the property to the Fraunhofer. And what we did was go in and, and fit out about uh, 12 rooms uh, with different types of insulation, internal, different types of treatments, external different heating systems, uh, different roof um, systems, windows and everything. And what we're doing is monitoring this um, basically every 15 minutes uh, in, in each room. And <clears throat> from an external point of view, um, we, it, there was a lime render on it, roughly about 40 mil thick. And it, it was, as the, the photograph on the right, you can see it was pretty shot. 
and we remove that and we put in, I don't know whether you can see my cursor, but um, this wall is uh, re-rendered with a Lime-based render with Aerogel, which is a really, uh, it was designed by NASA and um, it's, um, it was for, for the space shuttle coming in and out. And so it has incredible properties. And um, this, this lost my cursor. This wall was, was done with a 40 mil lime render with hemp. And um, this one uh, was just done on lime, 40 mil ordinary lime. And this one was done with uh, cork. And the measurements so far after about uh, two and a half, three years, is the cork and the hemp is improving the U value by about 35%, but it's still all breathable and allows moisture move. Um, and we're using the, the ordinary lime one as a kind of a, 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 a measure, a baseline measure. The aerogel, on the other hand, is performing to about 75% improvement in new values, which is just phenomenal. And it's still allowing about 85 to 90% breathability, which is, is also pretty phenomenal. Now, aerogel is a bit expensive at the moment, so we're not, uh, it, it's, it is on the market, but it's, um, it's, it's, it will become cheaper. Um, and then internally, we've used different types of calcium boards and uh, gypsum boards uh, to get a comparative analysis and how they're performing. And as you can see, we have all sorts of uh, widgets uh, in the wall, on the wall, outside, inside. And, and then we're also playing with clay paints um, that where we're, we're adding, trying to add some form of, of insulator within the paint um, and clay paints will, will be breathable and, and suitable for, for um, earthen and, and for traditional buildings. Um, <clears throat> but again, we're, we're doing all this research. We're working with about 12 uh, major manufacturers around Europe um, to tweak or develop products that are suitable for uh, our, our more traditional buildings. And here you can see where we're measuring uh, temperatures and relative humidity and everything else uh, within within the room. And um, so we're, we're beginning to get a phenomenal amount of information. Um, <clears throat> we believe that, uh, as I said earlier, EPCs and, and, and uh, BEORs really are not designed for older traditional uh, buildings. And um, so we, we invested in, in some kit that we go out and physically measure a, a U value. And this can be done pretty simply over um, a couple of weeks where we get uh, readings from inside and outside. Um, as you can hear, see here, it's just taped on the outside and taped on the inside. And, and we measure that and it's all done remotely. Um, uh, back really to, to the computer. And we can then get an accurate uh, reading and then we know where to start from. Um, we're doing a very big brick building in Trinity College uh, at the moment and it dates from uh, around 1690 uh, to 1710 uh, called the Rubrics Building. And again, people would have written this off um, because of its age, because of its construction. Uh, but actually, when we measured the, the U values of these walls, they're much, much better than any computer modeling would have told us. Um, we also do what's called Rylam tube tests, which is an initial moisture uptake test. So we, may, we can measure the, the, um, the, the porosity of, of the material. And in this case, it's brick, but we can certainly do this also on, um, on earthen buildings. And this will, will again feed into our calculations on coming up with solutions. Um, using modeling can be dangerous because, um, you know, and, and this is the Wuffy and I'm not picking on Wuffy, but, um, uh, you know, if, if it's difficult to put in the proper um, technical or geological information on 
on your 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 wall structure um, so it tends to go to the nearest so if we're using a limestone it has the base information of a German limestone, but that would be totally different to say a Portland stone in the UK or a Bulgarian limestone or, or even an American limestone. So uh, you, can, you can get false results uh, on it. And, um, you know, but uh, again, it, it can give us base information, but what we want to do is try to get to a level where we're actually inputting the correct information into it. Um, but using the Atonite uh, uh, evolution, which is a, a, a lime render with hemp uh, mixed into it, uh, can be very, very effective on traditional buildings. And as I say, reduce and give us a, a constant um, kind of uh, improvement in, in new values. So choice materials, uh, earthen buildings are very special and different. Uh, choosing materials for repair for, or energy efficiency upgrade are very important. They have to be compatible with all the materials uh, or uh, of the original. Um, sorry, I don't know what, what I meant to say there, mature. <clears throat> uh, the introduction of incompatible materials will be detrimental. So if somebody has put cement or a hard material in uh, then you must look at maybe correcting that is there um i don't think there's any international monitoring and i'm putting that out a question to the to the um, intelligent audience that we have today uh, that if there is we should be sharing and we should be looking at that and perhaps we need to initiate uh, some actual monitoring and some data sharing of data uh, we did a study recently for historic england and it was based on on understanding carbon within the built environment and when we went looking for accurate case studies we couldn't find any because people just don't take records before they start during the work and then after the work so it's uh, it's very hard to to do the comparative analysis on it and just this week earlier this week i had a, a an approach from the institute of heritage in romania and they have over one million earthen houses which are mainly being ignored we hope to put uh, a proposal together to create a similar study to benedict be born uh, in romania but it'll it'll feature the three main building typologies uh, brick timber and earthen so that could be fantastic uh, if they can get the funding to to do that and hopefully this could lead to, to a better understanding um <clears throat> so uh with with um icomos and and we do an awful lot of, of uh, transfer of knowledge by producing documents um, technical notes and indeed charters although we don't have a charter for earth and architecture but um, we do have a lot and we do share an awful lot of information so we would certainly um, i think if there isn't cooperation between uh, abuki and iskia there, there certainly should be and this is part of the the up upskilling and training and, and teaching um, the community and again um, Scarlett mentioned this uh, in within the heritage sector and particularly ECOMOS we 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 believe that by involving um, the community then you're you're ensuring continuity and and and, and a respect and understanding of, of our heritage buildings so in conclusion understand your building is is paramount uh, know what you want how what level of comfort do you want what level um, because there are certain you know diff different uh, ideas on that and then use professionals who know what they are doing uh, and if in doubt i always say do nothing so thank you